Hello, viewers. We are back on Sahara TV Live from New York City. It is afternoon in Nigeria. Uh, three, I mean, two forty p.m. in Nigeria, and it's eight forty a.m. here in New York. It's Sahara TV. My name is Omoyele Shore. I have right now on Skype from Lagos, Pastor Tunde Bakari. He's the leader of the Save Nigeria group. The group has been leading mass rallies in Lagos and mass protests against the Nigerian government's reversal of uh, or removal of the so-called petroleum subsidy, fuel subsidy that led to more hardship since January 1st. So welcome, uh, Pastor Bakari. Welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. Let's start by today's rally. Uh, there was supposed to be a victory rally today. Why call it victory rally when nothing has been totally achieved? The, the, we haven't had a reversal of the prices of uh, petroleum, I mean, gasoline, petrol, and you haven't had the revolution that Nigerian people demanded. Why was there going to be a victory rally today? Why was it called victory rally as opposed to something else? Thank you very much. It is victory rally because, yes, you might not have won the real war, but you have won some battles. You will recall that um, the price, the pump price was fixed at 141 Naira before we started the protest, and the government that said they would never come down on it eventually climbed down from their high horse and pegged it to 97, which they unilaterally fixed according to labor. That's still not acceptable to us. But be, beyond the fuel hike, other issues we had conversed and hammered, the government is now bent backwards to start looking into them. The issue of endemic corruption, overinflated, I mean, uh, over bloated government uh, structure and size of government in Nigeria and profligacy. Now they quickly ask EFCC to come look into their private uh, affairs, and also they are setting up uh, a committee here and there to look into this and look into that. Those were not the issues when the pump price was increased. And we want to tell Nigerians not to be discouraged. We must continue this matter and keep on keeping on until we get to the place we are the excesses of this government is cut down, and the endemic corruption in, in government in Nigeria is drastically reduced so as to set funds free within budgetary allocation to take care of Nigerians rather than taking the little crumbs in their hands called subsidy. So that's the victory there, because they were not going to back down and they were not going to do anything about it until the protest began and it was becoming overwhelming for them. So we just spoke to the labor leaders and they said that they didn't sell out uh, on the Nigerian people, that they were doing this to prevent bloodshed on the street. What is the opinion of your group regarding how labor handled uh, the events of last week or the last two weeks in terms of backing out at a time that uh, much had not been achieved? Did you think labor sell, sold out on you? Well, let's give them the benefit of the doubt that they had other reasons which they are yet to make public. It's unfortunate that in spite of their earlier stand that 65 Naira or nothing, they buckled given on uh, uh, what I would consider not very serious points. For example, they started talking about regime change. I don't know who spoke about regime change. Our group did not converse for regime change. What we said was to have spent 1.3 trillion out of the uh, out of the funds that should have accrued to federation account. They have spent it from source without any appropriation is an impeachable offense, and the National Assembly should look into it. We that's still part of the endemic corruption. Labor said in order to avoid bloodshed. That's not true. There could, be, there could have been bloodshed elsewhere. The policemen killed a few people in Lagos, but at Ojota rally, the Freedom Park rally, 
There was no single occasion of breakdown of law and order. The chief security officer of the state, uh, Governor Raju Babatunde Fashola, attested to the fact that all the five days it was peaceful. We brought in those who volunteered themselves without paying them a cobo. They were not paid any fees. The musicians, top artists, uh, Nollywood celebrities, to calm the people down as we were educating them because we knew that they needed to have the facts. And when they got the facts, they were ready to continue the protest. But labor buckled, and whatever anyone will say about labor, time will tell. They said initially, 65 naira or nothing, and that they were not going to go before Belgora Committee uh, to do any deliberation until they reversed first to 65. But they buckled at the best. Uh, we we'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but we also know that Leopards don't change their sports. It's not the first time Labour will do that. It's not likely to be the last time. And that was why Save Nigeria Group did not bank on them at all. We were not in charge of strike. We were in charge of the protest. Pastor Bakari, the other thing that you've been accused of, you mentioned that there was never a time you called for regime change, but they've accused you that uh, openly, and you must have read this so many places, that you were leading this because you lost in the last election and you were looking to get power from the back door. Um, how do you react to this? Well, you can't tell a dog not to bark and you cannot tell a lion not to roar. It's in the nature of those who do not think deep to say what they like with their mouth. The issue of election, I'd only participated in the electoral process in Nigeria for three months, January 15 to April 15, before the election on the 16th of April. Maybe we need to quickly remind the same people who are conversing this, that in 2010, when Yaradua was ill and Nigeria was going down the precipice, it was SNG, Save Nigeria Group, that led the march and the protest in Abuja and Lagos, that eventually brought this man into the position of power to act as the acting president of Nigeria then. And we kept on having a relationship with him to ensure that he stabilized until we saw the direction in which he was going. And our key leaders went to him uh, about September, November of 2010 to let him know that the nation is drifting again. And all those things we stood against, he had now started encouraging them and perpetrating them and that SNG would not support him. Those who are conversing that we are trying to get power through the back door do not even know the stuff we are made up of. The truth of the matter is this government has been extremely profligate. There is endemic corruption in the system. If it's not checked, it will wreck the whole nation that has to become broke. This is the reason that brought us out. It's not just a foil hike, uh, the price hike and a pump price. No, it is the total issue of anarchy in the land, the president said Boko Haram has infiltrated his government. The issue of endemic corruption, these are the issues in the forefront of our Bona, not even the, the foil I called deregulation, because there has been no deregulation, there has been no enabling legislation to effect deregulation. So those who think we are trying to hijack power should look inside of their heart and find out that they must be mistaken. Because we went to court, and everything about the last election ended when the Supreme Court passed their judgment. We are law-abiding citizens, we respect the constitution of this country, and we believe to put this very bad governance and uh, the attitude of mismanagement of our wealth uh, and, and the disrespect of the Nigerian people is put totally to an end. So we want to thank you, and we hope you come back to our show in the nearest future, hopefully I after sure the revolution. Will. I sure will, and I want to say a big thank you to you and let you know uh, on behalf of Save Nigeria Group, our allies and our members and, and friends, there's no going back. A new wind is blowing across our nation. It's called the will of the people versus the power of incumbency. Mm. And in as much as the constitution of Nigeria uh, put sovereignty and power in the hands of the people. We will take our destiny into our hand, reshape our nation, and we'll have a Nigeria that works in our lifetime.
God will save Nigeria because the people are willing to rise up and walk. We will save it, we will change it, and in our lifetime, Nigeria will become great. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Four.